Hi, everyone. Welcome to our session, GitOps Everything. Uh, my name is uh, Ayala Delos. I'm a platform uh, software engineer at AppsFlyer. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about a solution of uh, GitOps um, that was uh, constructed in our special team in the platform group uh, if, that was led by Eliran Bivas. If you went to a stack earlier, you may have seen some of the introduction I'm going to go through, but uh, be patient because I'm going to dive into the actual uh, architecture and the solution itself. If you're not familiar with AppsFlyer, this is AppsFlyer with the market lead in mobile attribution. Uh, you can see the amazing numbers. We were founded uh, only 10 years ago. We already have uh, more than 3,000 customers. We have uh, 20 offices globally, and we're continuing to grow all the time. If we look into our AppsFlyer engineers, we have uh, more than 400 engineers working in uh, squads. Uh, we handle, we have more than 8,500 microservices handling more than two and a half million events per second. And we handle and integrate with thousands of cloud resources and SaaS integrations. We grew uh, exponentially and an amazing growth and we want to continue to grow. We want to improve ourselves and to know how to handle this uh, amazing growth. So uh, this is what we're going to talk about. Uh, we're going to talk about our developers' uh, pain points that we found, and that in order to continue to grow, we need to solve the, their pain points. As you know, this is a GitOps um, conference, so why did we choose GitOps as our solution? How did we approach the solution? And what was our special AppsFlyer solution? So we started to look at our developer experience, day-to-day -day activity, to understand what are the major pain points in their developers' Uh, experience. We first started to look at the daily operations. We found that they are very, very fragmented, meaning, for example, uh, a user, a developer, want, wants to uh, commit a single commit to Git, develop, develop a single feature. He needs to go through the Git, through a CI, uh, CI system, a test system. He needs to go through a different service for the deployment of the service and a different uh, system for monitoring his service and production. Very, very fragmented. We looked at the developer autonomy. As I said, our teams work in squads, and meaning they should work uh, in full, full autonomy. And we saw it's not really the case. A lot of times, the developers need help and assistance from the platform team. They don't know how to build basic uh, infrastructures. They're missing permissions. I can say as a platform uh, engineer that we get multiple tickets from developers that they don't know how to do something, or they're missing permissions, and then they need to wait for us to give them permission or uh, to assist. We looked at the setups in AppSpire. A setup can be bringing an RDS cluster up. We saw it's not very easy and not uh, clear to understand what happened and how to build, bring it up. Lastly, we looked at the transparency of the developer's uh, development process. We saw it's very not clear. It's not easy to know what happened in my service, who deleted my cluster, who committed this commit. Very hard to monitor and understand what happened. After we understood the pain points, we decided we, need, we must increase the ownership of the developers and by that the productivity and to remove limitations, remove bottlenecks from the developer's uh, experience and the development. So why did we choose GitOps as a solution to approach these pain points? Most of you, view, or probably after this day, all of you know that the four goals of the GitOps is that should be declarative, uh, versioned and immutable, pulled automatically, and continuously reconciled. We should always get to the desired state the user wants for his service. We saw that the goals suit our needs, and we decided to uh, base our solution on the GitOps principles. We created our own solution principles. We want it to be intuitive, very easy for the user to adopt and understand how to use. Everything should happen in a single source of truth in the same place, with not, all, not fragmented all over the place. Self-serve, we want full autonomy for the user. He should know how to handle a service by himself. It should be declarative. Auditable, it will be very clear what happened before, and community driven. We don't want to invent the wheel, we want to use best practices of the community and adopt them in our solution. So, how did we approach uh, this uh, solution? We looked 
And uh, developers um, day to day uh, as we see it in AppSplatter, developers flow in AppSplatter, we have developer A and developer B. Uh, developer A, he commits some code changes and declares some uh, service deployment plan uh, and commits it to Git. You see GitLab here because it's what we use in AppSplatter. And developer B, she uh, commits some infrastructure requirements and some page reproducibility policies. They both commit and push to the same Git repository. Then, without uh, getting still into details, the GitOps workflow comes into uh, account, knows how to take all the changes that was just committed to the Git repositories, and apply the changes and communicate it to all of our resources, from Kubernetes deployments until SaaS integrations. Everything, we want to cover everything, everything should be uh, automated by us with the GitOps workflow. So Kubernetes deployments, cloud, cloud services, and SaaS integrations like data, data dog monitors. Just by that, without diving into the actual solution, we already have from Git an intuitive solution, a single source of truth, and an auditable also coming from Git solution. After we saw that, the simple uh, flow, let's uh, dive into our actual AppSplatter solution. We started looking into our uh, GitLab repositories. Um, uh, we decided to create an, a metadata folder. Maybe some of you are familiar with the metadata folder because the CNCF already started uh, using it, but we created also our own unique one that will suit our developers and app suppliers' needs. As you know, developers don't like to change their repositories, to change their services, so we wanted to create something very clear, very easy to adapt. So, like you see here, we have a .af a folder. Under it, we have three subfolders, actions, deployments, and environments folders. In the action folder, we'll define in each subfolder a different action for the service. For example, a build folder that will define how to build the service. Then we have the deployments folder. Each service can have multiple deployments because a service can have SaaS deployments like Datatog monitors or, um, or pager duty policies. It can have also other services it needs for, be for being deployed. So every deployment will have its own subfolder that will define, define how this uh, service should be deployed. And lastly, we have the environments folder that will define, define general um, environments for the service. For example, in which region to deploy, which availability zone. Like you see, all the files are Terraform files, uh, declarative language. If we look inside one of them, uh, if you look inside, you can see that in, with Terraform, we can also provide platform modules we provide for the developers. We now, for uh, bringing up a Kafka cluster, the user doesn't need to know anything. All he needs to say, I want a Kafka version uh, with this version, and that's it. We do the rest for him. If developers are familiar with uh, Terraform, they can write their own resources, and like an RDS cluster, and also use Terraform provided SaaS integration, like creating a new Datadog monitor. Uh, we gave it great, great power for the user. He can now define anything he wants in his servicing, services, any deployment. And as you know, with great power comes great responsibility. Uh, a user now, we need to, uh, we need, needs to know what permissions to give a service, who can get inside my service, what can go out. And by that, we came and um, found Open Policy Agent, OPA, which shows that uh, because the, it's a very, has a very, very big community, specifically in the CNCF. Um, it's policy as code, very easy to test. And there's a lot of policies, best practices that we can uh, take and uh, leverage from the community, and we can also contribute our own. We, for example, contributed a Terraform uh, 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 policy, how a deployment in Terraform should look like. And now our solution looks like, like this. In the Git repository, we have the .if uh, metadata folder with the desired state reading in Terraform. Then the GitOps workflow comes into account, knows to take the desired state, all the changes, and integrate it to all of our resources, all the, as long as it's in the policy of the OPA. So let's uh, stop a minute, look at our uh, toolbox. We have the Git, the Kubernetes for deployment, Terraform for the desired state, and OPA for the policy. 
And just by that, we, kept, we covered all the principles. It's an intuitive solution, single source of truth, out of the book coming from Git. Terraform is a very self-serve language. It's a declarative language. And all of our toolbox is community-driven. We didn't invent any wheel. We're using existing tools from the CNCF. OK. Let's go back a minute to the GitOps goals. It should be continuously reconciled. We should always get to the desi desired state that the user defined in his uh, service. We investigated and saw that the GitOps uh, continuously reconciled solution in the community is more of an application based. And as I mentioned before, in our company, in AppSpire, we have a huge, huge infrastructure. We have more than 8,500 microservices handling more than 2.5 million events per second, and we have thousands of resources we integrate with. We saw that the solution that the GitOps uh, community have doesn't suit really our needs here, because we want to uh, also um, give the solution to the infrastructure, not only to the application, to the service of the user. Uh, you may say, we have a Terraform plan. Using Terraform, we're using Terraform for the desired state, and running Terraform plan can detect the drifts in our service, right? Because when running Terraform plan, we can see uh, drifts in the service, what is missing, what was already deployed, what, should, what will, go, will be added, and so on. So why aren't we using that? As I already mentioned a few times, we have more than 85 uh, mic uh, microservices. We can't run uh, every, because we want to detect drifts all the time. We can't run telephone plan every few minutes and 8,500 microservices and 1,000 of resources. It's very, very expensive time-wise. And we're doing this solution to improve the developer's experience. We want the, the experience to be fast and to be uh, clear, and, um, and this didn't, didn't suit our need. So we started to search for a good solution for our case, for the in big infrastructure we have. After investigating and looking for uh, new startups, maybe, and so on, we found uh, Firefly, a new startup in Israel, um, that gives us the ability to get alerts from our code and also outside our code. Without us, us doing any action, we, can get, we just get alerts from outside of our, uh, of our code. We don't need to run any command like a Terraform plan. Uh, we can detect, with uh, integration with Firefly, we can detect uh, code changes inside our code, inside our desired state. We can get, detect drifts in our desired state. For example, uh, if uh, developers are changed or deleted manually an EC2 instance from AWS, we'll get, the, get an alert that th this happened. And manage resources, resources that exist, for example, an EC2 instance that we have in AWS but doesn't exist in our desired state. And ghost resources, resources that we think we manage, but don't actually exist. And now our solution looks like this. We have what we said before, and we have detection alerts of drifts inside our code, inside our GitOps workflow, and outside looking at our cloud uh, resources. OK, so we have this. We have detection from the code, outside of the code. But how do we manage our repositories? How do we know which repositories to manage? I'm sure most of you or all of you are familiar with Flux. Uh, basically, a set of Kubernetes controllers to keep, keep our cluster in sync. We use Flux as infrastructure, not, not as a solution. We use it as um, infrastructure. And we use some of the controllers in our solution. We use the customized controller and the source controller. The source controller will reconcile between our Git repositories. It will look at all of our services, all of our repositories in um, in, uh, apps in the GitLab and uh, detect uh, changes. If it detects uh, changes, it will clone the repository, the artifact, and save it in the Git repository CRD. And we have the customized controller that will look at our fleet repository. Our fleet repository is basically a set of YAML files. Each YAML file will describe a different uh, repository we need to handle. And it will take the detect changes from that and will clone the change. And then it will be synced with the source controller. So by that, we have detection. Also, on our uh, services, we need to manage in GitLab, all of our repositories. OK. But how does it all connect? 
How do we actually do the reconciliation? We have detections from the cloud inside our code. We know which repositories repositories to manage, how do we reconcile all of our thousands of resources, hundreds of uh, microservices. Sorry. <laughs> so for that, we created our own uh, special solution called Deployment Watcher. Uh, in the Deployment Watcher, we have two Kubernetes controllers. We have the Git Repository Watcher controller and the Deployment Unit controller. Uh, the Git repository watcher controller will reconcile between the Git repository CRD and the deployment unit CRD. The Git repository CRD, as I mentioned before, is getting updates from the Flux controller uh, about uh, repositories that were uh, changed or detected as new. Okay? Once the Git repository watcher controller detects the change, it takes all the deployments from the service. As I mentioned before, for each service, we can have multiple deployments. Each deployment will get a section in the deployment unit CRD. Then we have the deployment unit controller that will reconcile the deployment unit CRD. It will detect uh, new deployments that, needs to, that need to get deployed, either by alerts from the Firefly, that, as I mentioned before, or in, by an interval of uh, 10 minutes. It will go and look at the deployment unit CRD. Once it detects uh, an, uh, a deployment that needs to get uh, deployed, it will send it to the deploy tools. Why doesn't the deployment unit controller do the deployment by itself? We saw that infrastructure deployments, for example, bringing a Kafka cluster up, can take a lot of time. It can take a few minutes, 10 minutes. And the controller in Kubernetes needs to, take, to be fast, to take milliseconds. And this is why each deployment will get its own Kubernetes job in the deploy tools that will know to run Terraform plan and Terraform apply. And then later on, when the deployment is successful, we'll get an alert that it was finished successfully. But the deploy tools will, uh, will handle the deployments, not the controller. It will only listen and reconcile on all deployments. Uh, this is our uh, full uh, reconciliation solution. Just for numbers, uh, with this solution, we managed to benchmark 1,000 deployments, reconciliation deployments, under four minutes. Um, but don't think everything uh, went so uh, smoothly. Uh, we have a big infrastructure and app supplier, and we need to know how to handle this amazing uh, number, amazing uh, uh, success. I can tell you, for example, in my team, we're in charge of, of the GitLab and app supplier. And a few um, weeks ago, the whole GitLab crashed, and we didn't understand why. We investigated that and then found that this uh, amazing solution sent us uh, to the GitLab 4,000 uh, jobs at the same time. So we need to, it's still work in progress to know how to handle this amazing uh, numbers, amazing uh, success. But we're getting there. And uh, this is our solution. We have the Terraform for desired state. We have detections inside the code and outside of the code from Firefly. We have the Flux for uh, listening to our uh, repositories in Git. And we have apps that uh, constructed uh, everything with our special uh, reconciliation solution. Um, OK. If you uh, remember, I spoke about the transparency of that we want the developers to have and what happened in their code. And uh, now, with uh, this amazing solution, everything is happening in the GitOps workflow. The user, the developers don't know ha what happened with their services. Everything is happening there. They only describe and define their desired state. So how do they know what happened in their uh, service? For that, you can see here, if you see uh, up there, it's a GitOps, GitOps um, user in GitLab. We created a GitOps uh, um, user that each time a deployment is happening or a change is happening from the GitOps workflow, in our uh, uh, GitOps workflow, it will send a commit to the GitLab uh, repository. You can see here Terraform plan, Terraform uh, pre-plan, plan, apply, and verify. Terraform verify you're not familiar with because it's not really a Terraform command. We created, created it for, uh, for this uh, scenario. If we open, for example, uh, the Terraform plan, you can see exla exactly what happened here. Uh, Terraform plan, sorry exactly what happened here, what, how many resources were added, changed, or destroyed. If we open the Terraform Verify that we created, we can see exactly what happened in the, the Terraform deployment, in which pod it was deployed, 
what time, if it was successful or not. You can also see here a link to a Datadog uh, monitors. Uh, in the Datadog monitor, we can see exactly what happened in the deployment. You can see that the last log is that the job was finished and the status was synced. Uh, and by that, we solved all of our pain points. The, operation, the daily operations of the developers aren't fragmented anymore. Everything is happening in the GitOps workflow. Uh, the developer autonomy is very high because they can define what's happening, what will happen in the service in the desired state, which is very self-serve in the telephone. The setups are very easy to bring up because we do everything for them in the GitOps workflow. And the transparency is very high, either by the editable that, we, that is coming from Git, that can be uh, very clear what happened in the service, or by what I just uh, showed you now, that we um, uh, uh, commit to the user exactly what happened in their service. Uh, so everything was solved. And uh, uh, that's it. Thank you all for uh, joining uh, my session. And uh, if you have any questions, I'm here. <laughs> Do you want to take questions now? You ready? Okay. Mm -hmm. Anybody got questions? Uh, hi. Um, hi. One question is: um, Have you um, considered uh, using a crossplane? Uh, if you are familiar with this, with this uh, technology. And okay. second question is: How do you manage workspaces uh, with Terraform? How we manage workspaces in Terraform? Yeah. Um, so uh, uh, regarding the first question, the, uh, in the previous talk, Velran uh, Vivas, he mentioned that we uh, went uh, shopping in the CNCF uh, community, and we investigated, and also what we spoke with a lot of vendors to see what will suit our needs uh, the best. And this is how we came uh, to this solution. Um, we saw what will work best with our, with our uh, huge infrastructure, will be the uh, most uh, automated, and, uh, and this is why we chose uh, these uh, solutions. Uh, again, what was the second question? Uh, how do you manage uh, workspaces, or you, you or you use the, just the default workspace uh, in Terraform? Um, workspaces. Um, we use uh, just uh, the default uh, for now, but uh, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Welcome. Any other questions? You said that you have uh, a lot of uh, resources to manage, and then I was wondering if you also manage uh, physical nodes, so bare metal nodes, or it's just everything in the cloud? Uh, we also, not everything is in the cloud. We also manage uh, all kinds of SaaS integrations, not only uh, cloud assets. Like uh, we uh, manage uh, Vault, we manage Datadog monitors, pager duty policies. And, uh, so also the installation of the node, it's managed in a uh, GitOps way? Yeah, the, everything so that the, uh, Telephone this, can, yeah, they can define in Telephone, we, we can manage. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Welcome. Awesome. So uh, I saw that you include uh, GitKeeper in your GitOps workflow, and I was wondering uh, where do you check if those policies are, I mean, where do you enforce that po those policies? I mean. Uh, once the changes are committed in Git, or while, for example, you're opening a pull request, at which part of the uh, workflow? Before uh, we communicate, we deploy the changes. The open policy agent that knows how to work uh, with Kubernetes clusters, uh, we have the policies defined there. And if the deployment doesn't uh, suit the policy, it won't uh, get deployed to get a warning. Yeah. It's before the deployment, if I understand correctly your okay, question. So that happens before merging the pull request on the master branch? Yeah, the GitHub circle was before, yeah. The, the user, the developer defines the, the desired state, but only in the deployment process before it happens, the, the OPA will come into account and detects the policy if the deployments are in the policy. Okay, thank you. Okay. And another question, actually, uh, concerning the way you deploy resources. As if I understand correctly, you have a wrapper around uh, configurations around whatever resource you want to deploy uh, that you deploy with Flux, and then you have Terraform, which does the actual deployment of Kubernetes resources. And right. you do this for making sure that you decouple uh, 
the deployment time with Flux so that Flux will be happy and then you use Terraform to deploy the actual Kubernetes resources. Right, Flux we only use to manage our repositories to detect okay. uh, drift there uh, or changes in our repositories and which repository to manage. But the actual deployment we do with our special solution that uses at the end the Terraform from deplo for deploying. And you do that for custom resources as well? Yeah, for everything we use it. Yeah. Sounds like a really robust solution. <laughs> we have a out. huge infrastructure. <laughs> yeah. Any other questions? All right. Oh, one more. Last one, everybody. Uh, how, how do you handle the, um, the Terraform state file for every Terraform service? How do we have that Terraform state file? Yeah, whenever you run Terraform, you, know, it generates, you, you need to know the state. Uh, from the previous run, right? Right, so uh, because the, I, I uh, mentioned that the Terraform um, plan command, we don't use for detection all the time, right? But the um, Firefly that we integrate with is, can detect also changes there inside the code, and it will monitor it and send us alerts if there's uh, changes or drifts there. Cool, all right, thank you very much. Thank you. Great talk. <laughs> <laughs>